welcome everybody. I think we're going to kick this off. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I am used to using Teams and um, WebEx. So this is going to be always, this is always really fun when I start to reorient myself in Zoom. Here we go. Hopefully that's working just fine. Can everybody see the presentation? All right. Yes, I can. Cool. Awesome. So welcome, welcome to our October meeting. We're very excited to have you guys here today. It's so great to be able to resume the cadence. We had a little bit of a hiatus early in the year, as, as did everybody, because I'm sure that everybody was getting adjusted to this new normal. But now we're kind of, we got our feet under us and we're ready to get going. So welcome again to this October meeting and let's kick it off. All right. Hopefully if I click into this. All right, so before we get further along, too far along, I wanted to thank our host that's actually helping us do everything right now. Dialexa is amazing. I first actually discovered Dialexa when they reached out and partnered to host with us maybe some sometime, gosh, I think it was 2018. And um, a, a, a buddy of mine, James, I don't ever know how to pronounce his last name. Utley, 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 Utley. Anybody? Well, I say Utley, but then I also have mispronounced a lot of last names, so I'm not sure. <laughs> You've never corrected me. <laughs> so we'll just kind of brand him as Utley, just you know, this because he's not here to to, to defend, defend his honor in any capacity right this second. But yeah, so so James became a principal at Dialexa, as did you, Sarah. We're going to hear about all about Sarah in just a second. Um, and we, we had the opportunity to host over there and they graciously hosted and that was such a great um, event. And it was an in-person event. If, if, if anybody hasn't been out to the Dialexa office, oh my gosh, you absolutely have to go check it out. They even have a make, maker lab. I, I've never seen a maker lab. They actually have a room in the back where um, they actually in, engineer hardware items to to uh, couple nicely with their software solutions. So it's just an amazing place. But basically their mission is to be a technology research and design and creation firm. The Dialexa team delivers custom design and technology solutions to differentiate your business. And when everyone is using the same technology solutions, they give you a better solution. And so they're, they're a really great shop and I'm just really excited that they are our partner. So moving along. All right, so uh, for some of you who are um, joining us this time around, we introduced our new leadership team last, um, last meetup, which was in August. So uh, those of you have been, who have been on our, uh, with us along our journey, uh, we founded Ladies at UX way back in 2015 and I am one of the original three co-founder. So uh, for those of you who might all uh, might not know me, my name's Huma Wood Dude. And um, I've, I've been a part of Ladies at UX Dallas for uh, so 2015. It's been a really, really fun, um, fun way to uh, enjoy connecting and networking with people outside of work. And it, I just, it's just been a really great experience for me. And uh, we had Marty Gold and Jesslyn Beatty as our co-organizers, actually Marty helped co-found it along with um, um, uh, Mariah Hay, who's now uh, the vice president at, um, I think somewhere in Salt Lake City. She used to be at Plural Site, but anyways, it's a small world. Um, Sarah Ree has joined the leadership team along with Jenny Taylor. Uh, Sarah Reed is at um, Dialexa, as, as I kind of spoiler, spoiler alerted a little bit earlier. And uh, Jenny, Jenny, I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of a mysterious. I don't know if it's, it's public yet, but big question mark. Follow Jenny on um, LinkedIn for more status updates. <laughs> but do you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit to the group and uh, just say a couple things about yourself just so there's a name to a face? Sarah? Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I appreciate you all. Um, if you've uh, yeah, I've been in Dialexa's office or you're interested in learning more about Dialexa, I'm happy to chat and reach out to me about um, the kind of work we do and how we, um, you know, facilitate design thinking, work with engineering to build products. Um, 
I, yeah, I don't know. I feel awkward about bragging about myself. So maybe my, if you guys also are interested in getting to know me, I think my latest thing that I feel like I should brag about was I was named uh, a woman in technology honored in the top 25 of Dallas by the Dallas Business Journal. So there's this cool article that they put out online. You can follow Dialects of Social Media or, or, or me to get the, the link that's, uh, um, so you guys can read the article on me. But um, it was pretty much like a, a questionnaire and, and a conversation over um, my year and career in technology, how I came from design um, into technology and how I believe in creative problem solving and how we can come together to um, make better products, but also have, uh, you know, make our world and our lives better by collaborating and working together. So I'm really excited to hear Catherine's um, talk because I believe very much in embracing disruption and working with people to make that work. So um, I'm excited for that. And I'll pause there and hand it off to Jenny. Hey guys, I'm Jenny Taylor and um, I'm an associate creative director with Photon as of today. And um, I'm starting a new gig. I'm going to be leading UX AB tests and research at another company. I'm doing e commerce. I specialize in e commerce right now and I have for the last five years of my career. Um, but I'm not announcing it just yet. I will announce soon. Uh, but I'm very, very excited. It's a new challenge for me to lead an entire team. So it's going to be crazy. Wish me luck. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, I'm very passionate about e-commerce and um, love fighting for the user. And, uh, and yeah, I will pass it back over to Huma. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, yeah, so she'll be leading a, an entire team. So that means she'll have to be building an entire team. So if ever, anyone wants to cozy up to Jenny and become her best friend, I think that's probably a good strategy. Um, I highly recommend that. She's a great person to work with. I've worked with her for three years. So uh, I'm going to welcome Sandy into the waiting room. So can somebody let Sandy in? I'm just seeing that we have some a newcomer to our our event tonight. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, Lauren Kelly is, does any, can anybody see if Lauren is here to the, tonight? Lauren Kelly <clears throat> is our social media chair. She does, she's kind of, uh, you know, behind the scenes operating our social uh, networks, uh, tweeting for us. She's on LinkedIn, she's on Facebook. So if anyone heard about this event, you can probably thank Lauren Kelly. She's a great, great, great girl. Um, all right, moving on. Tonight's presentation, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah, who's going to introduce tonight's main event. Awesome. Yeah. So I think the next slide has a little intro, the, the title slide, the imagery that you guys have probably saw, saw which tonight we're talking about disruption as an ally. Um, especially UX in a COVID world brings new opportunities and new challenges to us. Um, and I would even say with disruption, yes, there's opportunity here in COVID, but there's often a lot of opportunity despite the, um, what's going on. There's new things that come up and new competitors. So as the world is leaning into um, UX exponentially adding more value to business, um, and since we're shifting to all things digital right now because of COVID, um, we want to be able to have a discussion around how do we use disruption as an ally and continue to reveal the emergence, emerging importance of UX in a digital space. And so that's the topic that Catherine will be speaking on. Um, she is a right now a creative director with Global Genes. She's leading the creative strategy and brand alignment for the organization. She's earned her degree in marketing and art from the University of Memphis and studied graphic design, marketing and art at Rhodes College at Baylor University. She brings 16 plus years of extensive experience in user experience design, research, digital, marketing, agile, innovation, and technology to her role. Um, prior to Global Genes is where I met Catherine and know her from Top Golf Entertainment Group in Dallas. She was the UXBA leader there um, in the technology innovation, and she partnered with leadership to create and transform strategy for the organization and accelerate the change and lean into really the agile product development framework that they were looking to, to utilize and help scale their business um, as they were going. Um, they had global uh, uh, locations, but they were looking to grow into more markets and she was helping um, with that as well. 
In addition, she led and coached a, a team of UX business analysts and established a UX center of excellence for design and research and partnered with teams to deliver phenomenal guest experiences. Top Golf is really big on putting that, um, creating moments that matter and creating good experiences. And, and Catherine made sure we understood the user experience piece and that voice was in all decision-making um, moving forward. And Catherine, before Top Golf, served as the UX lead for design and research in the digital marketing space at FedEx World Technology Center in Memphis. Um, she provided strategies and delivered for digital and agile transformation, product development, innovation, data, and analytics, and UX design and research for all digital platforms. And so one of the cool things, not only is like Catherine this like powerhouse of a strategic person with user experience, innovation, and bringing people together and working with development teams to make it happen and the business to understand the value that, that UX can bring. But she's also a very talented artist. And she currently resides in Dallas, Texas, and she's passionate about art um, and loves to read, travel, explore museums, and spend time with family and friends. I'm so excited to have you, Catherine. And I'm honored that you're here with us. Um, and I think we can go ahead and uh, yeah, in the slides, I think that's all the, the content. I kind of didn't look at the slides and just spread, spread <laughs> went through the, went through the content. <laughs> uh, thanks, Sarah. I actually feel like I wanted to cry at your introduction. It was so nice. And thank you for setting this up. And, and I appreciate the ladies that UX group. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be here uh, and to get a chance to talk to you all tonight. I have to say, it's been a while since I've been around UXers, this many UXers. So I, I'm really enjoying being around all of the creative people right now. Um, and just like Sarah said, I'm looking forward to talking about disruption as an ally and sharing some of my experiences and learnings with you. Uh, I definitely don't want this to be me talking at you all night. So if you have a question or a comment or you want to share your own experience, please do stop me at any point. Um, I do have a tendency to get ramped up and just go on uh, and I'll just keep driving. So just let me know. Uh, and I know Sarah and, and everybody else will help, help me um, keep accountable to that. So I'll skip over the part about me since Sarah already set that up. And I think what I'll do is just go ahead and, and jump right into the discussion. So when I look back over my life, professionally speaking, I can see this evolution in the UX industry. I've gone from creating paper mock-ups of designs to learning graphic design to facilitating design thinking workshops and strategizing and implementing uh, transformation for organizations. And when I think about our world right now, a few keywords and phrases come to mind. Uh, the first one, obviously COVID, uh, working from home, distance learning, Zoom morning, noon and night. I don't know about you if you have children, but trying to work from home and also managing other Zoom calls for your kids is sometimes a little overwhelming. Uh, so, you know, along with that comes the stress, the frustration, uncertainty, change, and in general disruption. So I'm sure there are a lot of other key words we can think of, but the fact is that the world is changing and it continues to change. It's been disruptive and we have been disrupted along with it. I think at this time, you know, we can see organizations are struggling. Everyone is, is asking, how do we pivot from in-person to Virtual, how do we create culture? That's a big one. How do we compete with everyone else in the digital space? What is it exactly that we are delivering now? Everyone is really taking stock of who they are and what they do. I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes by philosopher Heraclitus, great name, I know. We, we seem to have a theme with difficult names to pronounce. The only thing that is constant is change. 
And at this point in time, we have two choices as individuals and organizations. Believe that disruption can be an ally. We either adapt or we run the risk of becoming extinct. Loving these digital backgrounds, by the way. So what does that mean for us? What's next for UX in this type of environment? What are some ways that we can navigate this disruption called COVID and really thrive? How we navigate, how we sense and respond to our environment is directly related to our mindset. So what kind of mindset do we need to have going forward? Well, number one, we need to have the mindset that disruption can be an ally. My dad used to tell me life is not a straight line. It goes like this. And I think I didn't realize that growing up. I thought life was very much A to B. So I'll go to school, I'll go to college, I'll graduate, I'll make a lot of money working for my dream job which was doing print advertising at the time. And life was not like that. However, I have found that changes and disruptions in my life have really led to my most creative and productive times. In 2007, 2008, while I was working at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, I was laid off due to the recession. I'm not sure if anyone else in the room had similar challenges during that time, but I remember when they called me into the HR office to give me the news, I was sitting there and I had two thoughts. Well, I need to pay my bills, but on the flip side, this is also my chance to start my own business. So all of the tools, all of the skills that I had learned about design, graphics, art, up until that time, I was so antsy to actually use those. So Eclay Creative Designs was born. Uh, it was an online e-commerce store that I created uh, selling custom art and handmade furniture, solid wood furniture that people were able to customize. I designed a logo, a website, I did competitive analysis, I focused on great customer service and offering quality products. And at the time, I didn't really realize that all these things fell under the umbrella of user experience. However, users were my target audience and that's who I wanted to understand. So Eclay Creative Designs paid the bills during the recession and it lasted for many years. I really enjoyed doing it until about 2012. And one thing that I, I would like to encourage you is seek out the opportunities to turn disruption into an ally. Face the future with a growth mindset and not a fixed mindset. So that leads me to the next point. Have the mindset that disruption can allow us to see the bigger picture. Organizations have been forced into the digital space now more than ever. And I would love to hear from you all if you're seeing the same thing. And as a result, UX has emerged as not just something we have to do, it's not just a trend, but it's desperately desired. So since the beginning of COVID, I've spent less time, I feel like, selling the benefits of UX. And I've done a lot of that over the course of my professional career. And I've spent more time in the past few months actually applying UX and collaborating with team. COVID to me, I feel like has created a little bit of a colder world. We have less interactions with each other. We're less engaged and we're really disconnected. So this is the, capital T-H-E, prime time for us to work our UX magic to not just create amazing digital experiences and continue to deliver value through design and research, but it's an opportunity to use our UX powers for the greater good to bring us together in new ways. 
So in a way, disruption highlights our needs and oftentimes our path forward, which is actually quite exciting. So number three, have the mindset that disruption can lead to innovation. Not even a month into COVID, all of a sudden I was noticing, and maybe you were noticing too, that Facebook was blowing up with posts about hand-sewn fabric masks for sale. I had a friend who was a fantastic sewer and she was buying up fabric left and right. Then came monogrammed and custom fabric masks. Then Instagram and LinkedIn feeds started blowing up with Vera Bradley and top retailer name, name brand masks for sale. Fabric became a commodity. It's sold out at Hobby Lobby. It, you know, it's just interesting being able to see how people have adapted. Logan, we're in this together. We see it on TV ads and now on NFL helmets and everything is contactless. So Sarah was talking about working together at Top Golf. So we worked at Top Golf right up until COVID. And when that happened, it was interesting because the entire conversation that I was having with my team was how can we create contactless experiences? And since then, I've observed from many organizations in the world a drive towards innovation despite disruption. So a few examples, Burger King took the opportunity to revamp their drive through menu, making it more robust. Theaters brought back the drive-in experience. I actually just this past weekend experienced a Halloween drive through at the American Airlines headquarters parking garage $30 a car to drive through three floors of a decorated parking garage, and it was entirely packed. I've seen more restaurants added to DoorDash for contactless pickup and delivery. When two years ago, when I lived in Memphis, I couldn't even get DoorDash as a service in the area. It's been quite fascinating to see how the disruption of COVID has activated a sense and respond mode within us. It reminds me of Thomas Edison's quote, necessity is the mother of all invention. Our goals may not have changed, but how we achieve them may look very different right now. So number four, have the mindset that disruption can inspire us. Disruption allows us a lot of data points for us to measure and lead us to drive change. Are we in tune with users? Are we allowing ourselves to be inspired by what is going on around us? So as a designer, if you are a designer, the world is flooded with all things virtual, virtual meetups, virtual events, virtual happy hours, virtual meetings, virtual experiences, and virtual backgrounds. Are you going to design experiences that are simple and to the point? They all compete for our attention. So how are you going to look at design differently? Harness disruption and use it in a different way. This is your opportunity to take a step back and really look at how you can impact the world of design in this very uncharted new world of all things digital. So as a researcher, if you're a researcher, you understand the sometimes laborious process of recruiting participants, writing moderator guides, scheduling sessions, synthesizing results. It takes a lot of time, right? So how will you respond now when you cannot interact in person? So I'm currently working with a colleague conducting usability sessions via Zoom for a new website experience at Global Genes. And we've done several sessions already, and it takes half the time to me as an in-person study would take. And it's a lot of fun getting on a call and just listening to people and, and conducting usability like that, hearing what they have to say. I can turn around research faster and I can incorporate the feedback into an iteration of the design faster. Not only that, but it costs me nothing to set up unless you don't have a Zoom account, 
but I'll set up a 45 minute Zoom call with somebody for the cost of nothing. There's no overhead of going to a facility. To me, we can do even more research faster in this type of environment. And then as a leader, how are you responding? Are you creating strong vision and providing direction to your team so that they can execute on that vision? As I mentioned before, disruption can highlight the path forward if we allow it. On the flip side, it's also okay to say, you know what, I don't know the answer, but let's go find out together. To me, that's a sign of transparency, honesty, and trust. And I've noted in my past, a lot of leaders who have said things like that, and not only have said that, but actually roll up their sleeves and work with me to actually find a solution. Let your team know you value them and their ideas. Whether you are a US lead, whether you're a manager, a director, a VP, a CEO, it is important now more than ever to create a culture of team and collaboration daily. It's critical to foster that team environment because we are so far removed from each other. Just recently, we had our CEO set up 30 minute touch points once a week and not just by department or by team, it was with the whole organization. And to me, I was actually really excited about that because I get to see what everybody else is working on. It's an opportunity to align. We're being intentional about being engaged. So allow disruption to inspire you to be creative, to design new experiences, and to allow yourself and your team, your organization to emerge stronger. And number five, last but not least, have the mindset that disruption will not make you extinct. Recognize now, if you haven't already, that disruption never stops. It stays disruptive until something else disrupts it. So I want to give an example that I, I found really resonated with me. Lancome, the makeup manufacturer, and Michelle Fan. So this is a great case study from a book that I'll share with you later. YouTube once hosted cat videos and funny videos and evolved into what they are now today. A lot of tutorials, do-it-yourself videos, entertainment. So in 2007, Michelle Fan was creating her own makeup tutorial videos. And Lancome saw this as an interesting way to gain an audience. So they really recognized that there were two options. View the Michelle fan disruption as an ally, understanding that users were looking for more than Lancome was offering or become extinct. So in response, Lancome sponsored her in 2010 and then brought her on as a partner in 2013. And they ended up with a whole new following on a new platform with new engagement and reach just by creating that alliance with her and recognizing that as an opportunity. So to wrap up, I encourage you to have the mindset that disruption can open new doors of opportunity. So the book that I just mentioned is one of my all time favorite books and it was recommended to me by an agile coach and it's called Sense and Respond by Jeff, another, another last name that's hard to pronounce, Jeff Godhealth and Josh Seiden. So I highly encourage everyone to read it. I'll be happy to share it in the, in the chat or have Sarah and Huma follow up. But it is extremely forward thinking. It has wonderful case studies and it's perfect for the time we're in. And just as an FYI, I'm not getting paid to promote that book. <laughs> so I want to take time right now to open up this meetup for chat. If you have questions, if you have experiences that you would like to share with everyone here, this is a great opportunity to, um, I, I love the quote, iron sharpens iron. So 
you know, anything that you want to talk about, if you want to talk about your challenges, what you're feeling right now, the floor is open. And I know that uh, Sarah and Huma and Jenny will be happy to jump in and share their experiences as well. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on the chat too. So feel free, like if, if to just to keep order, if you guys want to want to chat up, feel free to speak up or, or raise your hand in the chat and we'll make sure we we get to you. But um, definitely, Catherine, thank you so much for your thoughts and your uh, wisdom and the, the stories you're sharing. I found it very inspirational. As you were talking, I thought it would be helpful to maybe even um, like explain a little bit about growth mindset versus fixed mindset. That's something oh, sure. some of my girlfriends have talked a lot about. And I try to, I think I strive for what growth mindset is. Um, but if you could explain it for the group, that'd be helpful. Oh yeah. Yes. So that's actually a topic that I'm super excited about and have been talking about more recently. So I'm glad that um, it, it has been a topic of conversation for everyone, or at least for you, Sarah, and other people. So when we talk about having a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, um, I think fixed mindset is you're used to things being a certain way. And a growth mindset is basically being open to new things. So at, for me personally, I know that having a lot of these types of experiences, challenges and disruptions within my life, you either take the fixed mindset path or you take the other path, which is the growth mindset. So I think it's a really important concept to think about it like that. And whenever you start feeling like you're in a challenge, you know, do you want to turn this into a positive or do you want to stay in the negative? Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. And another thing I was thinking, at least while you were, you were talking here, um, was when you talked about being able to embrace disruption, embrace change, embrace change. Um, it made me think of, I just finished, uh, Ride of a Lifetime, which is about, it's a Bob Iker, the head of, uh, the CEO of Disney. It's his story of how he came um, to be CEO of Disney and the challenges they faced. And one of the themes in his chapter, it's a little bit about his leadership um, principles too. And in one chapter, he really talks about um, the media industry being afraid of disruption and being afraid of the change that technology was going to have. And he talked a lot about people disliking even job, like the Steve Jobs relationship and the animosity between the new, um, you know, the industry, the new industry, the new stuff and, and the old guard. And he talked about forging that relationship and embracing change and almost being the ones to disrupt. And through that, um, I think he learned a lot about his relationship through Steve Jobs by acquiring um, uh, Pixar, understanding Pixar's vision, understanding oh, yeah. the creativity there. And that really helped, I think, with that decision and the way he handled that just set a model and a tone for so many other relationships that people began to see hope and vision for doing something new. So there is something about your leadership, like what you're talking about, leadership styles and the way you conduct each other and the way you set the tone for how to handle disruption and change. Um, really makes, especially in a creative industry, um, allows people to feel safe and comfortable and take risks, which I think yes. is so important. Yes, very true. Catherine, I also added into the chat uh, the Growth Mindset book by Carol Tweck. Oh, fantastic. I actually was just looking at the chat. Yep. It's one of my favorite books, and I've oh. given it to a number of people, um, particularly those who don't exactly have a growth mindset. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. No, they, that's they, an awesome book. I'm glad you shared that. Because, you know, I've worked, so I'm going to date myself here. Most, many of the people on this call know who I am. Um, but I was in this at the beginning, um, before it was called user experience. So uh -huh. I was a webmaster in 1995. And, oh, nobody, wow. and nobody even had any clue what the impact of the internet was going to be. Right. And, you know, I mean, back when I was a webmaster, we started out with a website that didn't hold state. So you couldn't do forms. You, you There was so much that now we take for granted that just didn't exist um, with the internet, 
you know, back in the mid nineties. And I went to work for one of the big internet consulting companies called Scient. Um, there were a half a dozen of us that were all competing one another. And it was fascinating on two counts. One was to see how all of the, um, the startups were just popping up out of nowhere, like popcorn, you know, it was like whack-a-mole. They, they, right. They'd pop up, they'd disappear. They pop up, you know, but the <laughs> other thing I got very interested in seeing how big corporations were trying to figure out what this internet thing was, how it was going to impact their business, um, what they could do to prepare and believe me, none of them, uh, the conception of it at that point was very small. I mean, uh, when I was at Cyan among my, my clients, Wells Fargo, for example, and they had different forms for everything. You didn't really set up an account that had your basic form stuff. So if you wanted a loan or a, a, you know, a car loan or a house note or whatever, it was all separate forms and there was no sharing of information. Um, those were very siloed within the organization. And I think the coming of the internet forced a lot of old enterprises to rethink their business processes. Right. Um, so yeah, that was a huge disruption 25 years ago. Um, and then of course we had the, the dot bomb and then the recession from the housing, you know, and each one of these, I, I really appreciate, appreciate what you're saying about how when this stuff happens, we have to rethink everything. We do. And if you want to survive, you have to say, how might we exactly, adjust, how might we adjust or adapt to whatever the world is throwing at? It's not going to stop. We will have disruption. It'll be a tornado. It'll be a hurricane. It'll be an earthquake. It'll be floods. It'll be a president. I, you know, yes. so many things that can disrupt. <laughs> You know, it's it's just kind of a funny thing. You don't really know what the next disruption is going to be, which is why it's a disruption. Right. Yeah. So you know, we always have to be prepared for it. And Absolutely. I think that's that's part of that growth mindset is, you know, not to not to be negative, but life is full of changes. Absolutely. So, you know, are you going to try to have a little fun with it? I mean, granted, there are negative things all around, but we can have a mindset of, you know, this is not a great experience, what's happening right now with COVID or whatever it might be, insert challenge, but what am I going to do to be able to change that course, exactly. to be positive, to, and, and to inspire and encourage other people too. So I love when I get on a Zoom call, I don't like being on Zooms every single day and having meetings you know, I get tired. I'm sure everybody does, but you know, I'm always a little bit encouraged when someone's on a zoom call and, and, and they're happy, you know, and they're like, they want to be there. They have their video on, you know, they, it, it inspires me. And again, like I said, iron sharpens iron. So I love that. Uh, and for me personally, I want to be more like that. And, you know, I think everybody struggles with that, but but it makes me feel really good to be able to do that, you know, and try to apply it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all about adaptation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, and, and I think I'm going to call on share it here a little bit. Oh, sorry if I interrupted somebody. It's okay. All I was going to say, and they said you couldn't teach old broads new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is obsolete now. <laughs> it is absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I was going to call on Shara for a little bit because I know she has intentionally disrupted her career and she talked a little bit about that at Big D. So I thought she might want to share her experience here. And oh, then awesome. after that, I'll, I'll call on Christy as well. I see Christy's raised her hand. Well, yeah. So um, I would say this time last year, I was at home on maternity leave with my third and final child and just kind of reflecting on the year and just feeling like, well, before I left, I had to do a perf my perform performance review because I was going to be gone at the end of the year, through the end of the year. And so I was just thinking about like, man, I just feel like this year was a wash and just kind of really reflecting on my career. And so I just, I made the decision 
holding this one month old baby, I said, okay, fine. I'm going to just, I have to do something different if I want different results. I hadn't had the growth that I wanted. Ooh, I love that. Yes. Yep. You have to do something different if you want different results. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, I can't sit here and complain about where I am two and a half years into this role that I had really high hopes for when I've not done anything different. What, what I've done hasn't worked. I've you know tried, tried everything, like taking all these classes and just being in constant communication with my manager, but the company wasn't structured for me to grow the way that I hoped that I could. So um, I decided to jump into the SMU program for the, uh, and gain my UX certification. And I just really kind of made the whole theme for this year to just do things completely out of the ordinary. And as you were talking and you mentioned, I was like, well, that was kind of intentional. I intentionally disrupted, you know, my status quo in order to making myself uncomfortable doing things that I don't normally do. I would never do a conference talk ever. Me talking right now is something I would never do on one of these. That's things. awesome. It makes that. me super, it makes me super anxious, but I feel that every, with every like risk and chance that, is, um, that I've taken this year, it's totally given me some sort of reward, be it that I've been able to support someone or help someone else. I've made just wonderful connections and relationships. Uh, Madeline is who's on the call. We've become such good friends and we just met only this year, thanks to the SMU program. So just like all of those things that have, uh, that have, um, come to fruition, things with the change that I wanted did happen because of the disruption and just kind of being brave and taking a uh, intentional step out there. So I love yeah. that story. And I'm actually super encouraged by that. And I get anxious talking too, just FYI. I get super nervous, like right up until the event. So you're in good company. And you actually reminded me of, um, I'm actually going to share the link. Uh oh, you're muted. Thanks. Yeah, I think as you, okay. Did y'all hear anything I said? No, no, okay. Well, you, I love the story that you told and uh, you actually reminded me of types of disruption. So I just shared the link. So you have intentional disruptions and and there's actually seven types. Uh, I don't know if anybody's read this before, but uh, you have innovation disruptions, you have competition disruptions, things that are serendipitous by chance, you know, just organic disruptions like COVID. <laughs> you have other disruptions, like for example, Netflix and Blockbuster, and then reinvention. So, you know, to me, it's almost like you've intentionally disrupted so that you could reinvent yourself and stepping out of your comfort zone so that you could learn new skills, you could make new connections. And I think that's awesome. I think that's definitely the growth mindset, you know, getting out of that fixed mindset and moving into a growth mindset. That's awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for, for sharing. And Christy, I saw you raised your hand. Yes. Yeah. Hey guys, I actually work with Sarah and Shara. So love hearing your all's voices. Um, but yeah, so on a smaller scale, I think like what we do every day is disruption in our jobs. Like when building a product from, you know, from user testing to synthesizing those results, like you're pivoting constantly. And I think what we're experiencing today is like, it's just another, it's a much larger scale of disruption. Like it's society, it's emotional. There's a lot of things behind it. But I think what we do every day is we've, especially as UX people, like we've learned to adapt and to change and to pivot, you know, as products evolve, as we evolve and learn. So I think that's, yeah, that's all I had to add, but yeah, it's a smaller, smaller scale idea of what we do every day. Yes. And and we're used to it, right? As UX people, design, research, that's what we do all the time. So how can we bring along everyone else on our teams and get them into that same mindset? So I, yeah, I love that. That's a great point. All right, I see Huma's uh, chat. If anybody wants to express challenges they have, um, facing disruption and how it's impacted their work lives, whether it's current challenges you're having um, or something you've had in the past, if you feel comfortable sharing, um, that would be something we'd love to add to the conversation. 
We could also potentially talk about uh, some areas we could benefit from learning techniques to cope with disruption. Because I think as we've mentioned, at least I've, people have touched over it and glossed over it, there's anxieties <laughs> that happen. And then there's oh, yeah. that antithesis you talked about, like what is our default comfort that makes us want to hit fit a fix mindset? So I actually have a question that I'd like to pose. Is anyone dealing with challenges with culture? You know, working from home, um, you know, I, I think about jobs that I've had um, and being able to go in every day, talk to people, work to work together, facilitate workshops. Is anyone having struggles with culture right now? Jenny, here's a virtual kindergartner. Like, is it there? That's so appropriate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so since we're all friends here. <laughs> virtual kindergarten so my son literally started school for the first time ever during the pandemic and i find myself juggling full-time work with a day full of constant meetings and then trying to start his meetings <laughs> and i'm like i'm trying to be like growth mindset <laughs> but i'm failing oh, yeah. you know, i'm failing miserably at, at, at having a growth mindset i'm trying but Oh, it's so it's so tough, and um, so that's that's my struggle. It's um it's a new it's a new world out there. You know, I mean, this is a a new frontier that you know we've never had to deal with as you know as a working parent before, having to um, really facilitate school and then do your job at the same time. So, yeah, it's it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> the day-to-day -day logistics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I had a parent-teacher conversation, and I was like, I'm sorry my son is late for, like, all of his classes. I'm usually in a meeting, and I have an alarm go off, and then I'm like, okay, I'll start it now. So. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate. My kids are older, but it's still, once work is done, it's homework help time. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you have a whole evening of, uh, making sure they're doing their uh, long forward. days. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Anyway, thanks for letting me vent. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> so above and beyond virtual kindergarten, I wonder if there's any additional challenges anyone's faced. We've heard about culture. We've heard about this adjustment of the impact. And I, I'm so happy that you shared that, Jenny, because I think it was Melinda Gates who recently said that women for the first time in their careers have to decide whether they want to be a mother or they really want to work. It's almost like they at, the, at this fork in the road and they have to decide. So I just think that's very, very interesting. Hi. Um. I have one. Um, I guess I can turn on my video. I'm Molly. Um, so I am one of the only UX people at my company. And so I've done a really, not a really good job, but like everyone knows who I am now and they come to me for all of the questions and I can drive change that way. But I'm only one person and, you know, how do I, I I'm growing the team, but you know, there's headcount issues and budget to actually hire additional people. And so I'm working on those hurdles, but those are slow moving. But in the short term, I'm trying to figure out, I, I tell my boss not to like put myself out of a job, but how do I empower others to embrace change um, in the same way that I think we've all discussed, you know, UX just inherently, you know, we're all kind of game for it. We know it's coming. Um, and I've, you know, toyed with, I'm trying to prep a presentation. My boss is like, great, teach people. And I'm like, oh, what do I teach them? Um, so like design thinking obviously comes to mind, but we're just in a, my company, you know, they're all overworked. So if I give them like, oh, use this tool, they're going to be like, great. Um, I don't need another thing to do. Like, I know how to do my job. Don't tell me how to do it. So I'm trying to like covertly teach them that kind of what they're already doing is a lot like design thinking, but then encourage them to embrace change. So anyways, that was long-winded, but hopefully that makes sense. Like if anybody has any tips oh, about how to 
<laughs> spread the UX love in a way that isn't making me the only one who can implore that. I see there's a book recommendation, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you. You're welcome. You'll like it. It's a great book. Yeah, so I know for me, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Um, constantly having to deal with budget issues, not being able to hire the people that you need to build out the team that you want, ideally. And I, I mean, I've worked at FedEx, I've worked at Top Golf, I've worked at nonprofits. I currently work in a nonprofit. So, you know, I totally understand that. And, and I'll, I'll just say from my own personal experience, the best way to teach people is in the day to day, you know, in the, your next meeting, you know, start thinking if you're not already about how you can maybe facilitate the meeting in a different way, get people up. I know you're probably like virtual right now, but you know, like brainstorm on creative ideas or get people start sharing things that are design or UX related. Um, that's just my my recommendation and you know that change doesn't happen overnight it's it it takes a while right so you start planting those seeds uh in small ways it doesn't have to be a, a big grand gesture it doesn't have to be a full-on strategy but you just start bringing people along with you um little by little hope that helps a little <laughs> That's, that's great advice. And I think Donna also has um, some comments to add. Awesome. Hi. Um, so here, I'll turn my video on too. Hi. <laughs> it's um, um, actually, so what I was going to say is that in my experience, just to kind of add to what you had already said, I really look bad. I'm turning it off. Sorry. <laughs> You look no worries um, and no pressure. It's a late night. <laughs> it's a late night for me. Um, I, so uh, what I was going to say is that um, kind of adding to what was already being suggested, uh, adding to the day-to-day -day and, and getting um, especially other teams that are not UX teams to be thinking about UX, my suggestion then would be uh, the teams that I've worked with, uh, I was the first person on their product who had uh, worked with them. And we came up with our own system. I worked with them. I sat down with the engineering team and the product team and said, okay, when we go through the JIRA tickets, how can we label these so that it's easier for you to continue to organize and not have me as the bottleneck? Um, and so we label the tickets differently if it's something that they need to let UX be aware of, as opposed to, oh, we know that there's going to be some decisions down the road that need to be made. Um, and then we had those conversations and I gave them some examples of how to start looking for, um, you know, some of those situations so that it wasn't so last minute so that they could plan and then we could plan meetings instead of, um, teaching them everything that they need to know, just allowing them to have the opportunity to have the heads up and then them come to you and you continue to plan has, has really worked for me is what I was going to say. Definitely great advice. Uh, thank you. I appreciate those. It is slow moving, but it's worth it. So Keep on keeping on. <laughs> it is. And it's always rewarding when you start seeing some of the results, like the fruits of your labor. When someone's like, oh yeah, does this design look, look okay? And you're like, why? Do, do you think it doesn't? And they're like, well, you know, I remember thinking about this concept and you're like, oh, that's amazing. You just made my week. <laughs> I have a comment. I, I wonder out loud if our particular type of field has equipped us better to pivot and adapt and respond and overcome more than some others, uh, you know, especially since a lot of us work in an agile, literally agile environment, right? And responding quickly and ideating and iterating is something that's now in our DNA. And I wonder if maybe that has helped some of us as 
you know, compared to other types of fields. Yeah, and I think another thing that might be helpful, especially if you're a one man team, <laughs> the lone wolf on the project, which I've been many times, um, but when it comes to like, well, from my experience of contract work, you're very much by yourself. Um, so something that has helped me, and especially it sounds like you work with developers, which is great, um, is, you know, get your developers involved, like get them part of the process and, you know, do rough user testing with them, get their in input and opinions. And I think that would be, you know, really good for your communication and transparency with them. Um, but also like, it's another person to bounce ideas off of as well. Yeah. And awesome. this, well, I think we've got a lot of good folks. Oh, sorry, Catherine, I'm cutting no, you off. No, that's fine. Do you wanna say one last thing? Yeah, okay. well, I think um, there's one more book recommendation or website resource uh, from Donna. Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, I enjoyed being able to speak and engage with you guys. So um, if you ever want to contact me and you need more specific thoughts or you want to balance ideas off someone about how to problem solve things like that, always happy to help. Um, you can, you know, I'm sure you have my contact info and can share that, um, but always happy to help and provide any insight from any experience that I have. Awesome. Thanks so much, Catherine, for providing that as a, as a resource. Um, that's really gracious of you. Um, so now I think we're going to go ahead and transition. I think I'm going to hand it over to uh, Jenny to um, close us out. But I wanted to say thank you guys all. Thank you, Catherine, for bringing your, your thought leadership and, and your experience in this topic. And thank you all for participating and chatting with us. Um, and, and being part of the dialogue. This really helps enrich my Tuesday. So I appreciate your guys' presence. And Jenny, why don't you take it away for closing us out? Sure, thank you so much, Catherine. This was great. And I feel like the timing couldn't be better to talk about disruptions since uh, obviously there's so many changes going on in everybody's life right now. I think that's super important. It's definitely changing the user experience on many, many fronts. Um, so. And, um, and also, Donna, I love the Laws of UX link that you posted. Um, just personal endorsement. I use that all the time with stakeholders, and I point them to that as, as kind of, you know, a way to educate and help to sell the, the power of great UX design, too. So, yeah, that's a, that's a great resource to have can do for everyone. Um, so at this time, we would love to open it up. For anyone who's hiring, if you would like to share a new opportunity, please post your name and company in the chat window, and uh, we'll call on you to share some details. Um, if you're looking for a new opportunity, please follow us on Twitter, where we will be regularly posting job opportunities. Our Twitter is at ladies, that UX D-A-L. Um, I'm going to post that in the chat window right now. There you go. All right, and our next event will be scheduled for November 17th. It will not be a virtual event. It will actually be an in-person meet and greet at Nilo and Plano, which offers a nice indoor-outdoor space and will be set up for social distancing. Uh, we'll be sharing more details soon on Meetup, Twitter, and LinkedIn in the next few weeks. Um, let's see, is there anyone who shared anything? Oh, Dialexa is looking for designers. Okay, Christine, do you want to share more details? Yeah, so yeah, we're looking at um, designers. Um, I'm sure Sarah could talk more, but I think um, senior and associate levels, um, we are open, we're hiring, we're, you know, our team's growing quite large pretty fast. So yeah, we're just looking for great talent. You know, if you're more on the research side, the UX side, the UI, like come, you know, just come put in a good word and we'll, yeah, we'll get you going. So hopefully you guys are interested. Okay, Don is in Canada. Is it remote? <laughs> <laughs>
All right, cool. Yeah, not not remote not remote jobs right now. Maybe yeah. in the future, but right now we have no no policy for being remote. Yeah, and it usually isn't international because yeah. uh, most companies have to to have already some place located in Canada. So that ah, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's fun though. That's, I feel like I learned something. Sorry. All right, so it looks like there's no new job opportunities tonight. So again, follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter um, for more details for that and look forward to our next meetup information. And again, I wanna thank Catherine so, so much. What an awesome presentation tonight, um, especially with the backgrounds. Great use of background. <laughs> that, was, that was the best. <laughs> I had to give a credit to Huma for that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> little golf clap for you guys. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Catherine. Um, and of course, Huma and Sarah, thank you all so much. And we look forward to everyone seeing everyone, hopefully in person, socially distanced at our next event. Have a good night. Sounds great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.